us now for more is Mercedes Bent from Lightspeed Venture Partners. I remember asking you last time, Mercedes, about the opportunity for women to get into retail trading. What are, what are the numbers showing and then who's doing the best job at capturing that? Women investors, you're right, and good to see you again, Sarah. I think women investors are often not as invested in the stock market. We know there's this gender investing gap. And where we do see some brighter spots are in companies that are more passive investment products. They tend to have the highest percentage of women investors relative to other investment products. So thinking about Stash or Acorns, they're known as industry leaders when it comes to having women percentages. And that's just around 35%. We are seeing you know, some newer entrants, companies like Griffin, that are seeing 50% of women be investors on their app. So there, there is some hope for, for women investors, but there's certainly a lot you know needs to change. My other question, Mercedes, is how has the landscape changed for a lot of these startups? Obviously, Robinhood's still planning to go public and other companies that are hoping to capitalize off the retail boom now that it's still going on. I mean, some people did not expect it to last. And especially after we saw the first plunge in GameStop, we're surprised to see that it, that it keeps creeping back up over and over again for GameStop, AMC, and a number of others. Certainly. I, I think the retail investor is not going anywhere. And people you know, saying that this was just a moment in time, I really view it as more of an awakening that retail investors understand their power that they have to work together or to just independently be a big part of the investment conversation. I think historically, you know, even there's public companies that aren't able to get a, enough retail investors to respond to some of their proxies to pass different things for the company. And now now they're what they're going to be dealing with is a much more engaged audience base. So I think retail investors are just start getting started and it, they've started with equities, a lot of individuals. But obviously, in the past couple of years, we've seen more people investing in mutual funds and ETFs. And now I think a direction that we're headed is also seeing retail investors more interested in alternative investments, we, obviously with crypto and NFTs and also thinking about commerce oriented plays like Mythic Markets or Otis. There's a lot of of, of space for retail investors to continue their interest. C clearly, uh, new entrants, roughly, r r fairly new entrants like uh, Robin Hood have done well to capture a, a lot of this trend. W what about the traditional brokers? Uh, are they also seeing similar size gains and have they adapted to, to capture what retail investors are looking for? My understanding is that the, re the existing brokerages, I myself am, uh, uh, I work with Fidelity for my retail brokerage. And my understanding is I think they've adapted really well to the past few years of the changes. If you think about, they've re responded by lowering or eliminating, in some cases, their fees and making it more approachable for different types of investors. They're also trying to add in a lot more educational resources. And so some of the trends, places where I think retail investing needs to go, it needs to make retail investors feel more like a member. It needs to have more education to bring, like we were speaking about women, bring more women onto their platform. They need to have more of a social and community focus. There's different traditional brokerages that are, are doing interesting things in each. Fidelity, I think, has a strong education focus. So they're certainly listening and watching what's going on in the newer entrants. How, how do you think about how all of this does during a downturn? I mean, it's been a rocky few weeks for, for the NASDAQ. And, and, and just how much of it is fast money and how much of it is longer term retail money, which you know, people have wanted to enter the market for years? You know, it's a it's a great question, and I haven't seen the full breakdown of what percentage of people. You know, I think one of the really big questions I asked myself is what percentage of people were buying just these meme stocks when and not buying anything else. I really the data that I have, the small data I have seen shows that people are buying into these longer term saving stocks, maybe more of the tech stocks or the brand names that they know, in addition to maybe some of the meme stocks. For so the last few weeks are not really just a wash in terms of people coming in and. And, and not being participating. Overall, I think this is going to be really positive for long-term participation in the stock market. Mercedes, thanks so much for joining us. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.